This is everything you need to know to visit the city of Calgary in Canada. All right, let's go. The first thing you need to know is just some general information about Calgary. Calgary is the largest city in the province of Alberta with over 1 million residents. It is often nicknamed the gateway to the Canadian Rockies because many people just come in here on their way to Banff National Park, the biggest national park most popular in Canada. Now, the reason for that nickname, Gateway to the Rockies, is clear. It's on the edge of the Rockies, offering amazing views of the snow-capped mountains from the city. Calgary really offers a unique blend of cosmopolitan city life and western Canadian charm. The city has a vibrant downtown core with museums, art galleries, and trendy restaurants, but you're also going to find some big Canadian western culture on display. The number one event in Calgary is the Calgary Stampede. It is not just a rodeo, but in fact, it is a rodeo, but it's also a festival with 10 days of foods and rides. You'll find that every year in July. Now, beyond the rodeo, Calgary was really put on the world stage in 1988 when it hosted the Winter Olympics. And so you'll find lots of great winter activities. If you come here during the snowy months, you can also check out some of those old Olympic venues. But I'd say the reason why most people come to Calgary really is that gateway city to the Canadian Rockies, to Bay Banff. It's the closest airport to Banff, but you know what? If you're coming in, you might as well spend the day in Calgary on your way in or your way out, which is what we've done in this video. And so this is primarily geared towards people that are spending one or two days in Calgary on their way somewhere else as most people do. The second thing you need to know is some information to help you get oriented to Calgary. Calgary as a city is divided into four different quadrants. You've got Northwest, Northeast, Southeast, and Southwest. The center of the city is roughly about Center Street. You'll find numbered avenues running East, West, and numbered streets running North, South. Addresses proceed outwards from the center of the city. So for example, if you're looking for 520 15th Avenue Northeast, you're gonna find that on 15th Avenue North between 5th and 6th Street East. Interestingly enough, the important roads in Calgary are going to be named trails. Yes, if you see something that says trail at the end, chances are it's not a hiking route. It's it actually likely a major road. Now downtown that you see just behind me, this is going to be home to the most concentrated area of Calgary's tourist attractions, museums, shopping centers, restaurants, etc. That is between the Bow River and the train tracks. The train tracks that are just right there, now going south from that to 17th Street, is known as the Beltline District. This is a more hip, up and coming, think breweries and trendy restaurants. And in particular in the Beltline, the south border of it, 17th Avenue Southwest, is definitely the place you want to be seen and see others in Calgary. The third thing to know is some information about getting into Calgary. So Calgary does have a pretty good airport. YYC is the three letter code. You will find major flights that come in from North America, Canada, of course, also the USA, even international flights that come as far as London and even Tokyo. From the airport, it's about a 20 minute drive to get into downtown Calgary. Now, if you're flying from Calgary back to the USA, you should know that this is an airport that has US customs and security at Calgary, meaning that when you fly into the US, it's like you're flying domestically, but that does mean if you are flying back to the US from Calgary, you should make sure to get there 90 minutes or two hours early so that you can clear US customs here. Now, if you're driving into Calgary from Banff, which is where a lot of people go to or are coming from, it is about 90 minutes. From the US border in Montana, it's three hours. From the nearest big city, Edmonton, it's about three and a half hours. And from Vancouver, the big city in British Columbia, it's 11 hours. That's a pretty long drive. And if you're wondering about the train, no, there is no longer any train service to Calgary. Let's talk about getting around Calgary. One of the coolest ways to get around is actually to take the light rail. This light rail was built out for the Winter Olympics here in the 1980s. And so it's a relatively new public transit system as far as city transit systems go. And what's extra cool about this is it's actually free in the downtown core along 7th Avenue. You can take it in the center of downtown for free. You don't have to buy any tickets. If you do buy tickets to go further afield, there are four different spurs that run out from downtown. It's on the honor system. There's no ticket gates. Just buy your ticket from a machine. It's good for 90 minutes. Hop on, hop off. Uh, and we, we just enjoyed riding it around the downtown center though. Another great way to get around, particularly downtown, is by walking and a nice walking thoroughfare. It's called uh, Stevens Walk, Stephen Avenue. This is pedestrian during the day. Great place to just go for a stroll downtown. Just one block 
walk off the train line. Also, if you're here in the winter, there are a ton of bridges that will connect all of the buildings together because it can get pretty cold in the winter. And so you'll want to make use of those. Though I think the way most people get around is by driving uh, and it's pretty easy to pick up a rental car. Most of the major rental car companies operate right in the airport, the rental car center, uh, just across from the domestic arrivals. Now, if you are driving a rental car, you'll want to know your license plate when you park because many of the parking pay systems here, you basically come in and then you gotta like enter your license plate uh, and it doesn't print out anything, but you enter your license plate and that's how you pay for your parking. So make sure you remember it when you get to these machines. And another option for getting around are these rental scooters, a whole bunch of orange ones around the city by Neuron. You use the app to unlock them. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, they come with helmets. So be careful if you ride these things. Okay. Oh, and it's also nice when you're walking around, they've got these city maps everywhere. So even if you don't know where you are on Google Maps or where the big attractions are, just find one of these big blue signs and decide where you want to go. That's what I did. The fifth thing to know is about the weather and when to go. And when most people come visit Calgary is absolutely in the summer, particularly because summers here are relatively mild. The average high temperature in June, July, August is about 23 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, certainly it can get warmer. We're here right now and it's about 28 degrees Celsius, uh, about 80 degrees Fahrenheit in May, but that's a pretty untypical uh, type of weather. Now, if you come in the winter, it can be bitter cold here in Calgary. Like the, the lows get down to the negative 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, and in January, the average high temperature in January is negative two. So on average, it doesn't get above freezing. So brrr, only come in the winter if you have a lot of really good cold weather gear. Uh, shoulder seasons of spring and fall. We came in shoulder season of May. Hotel rates pretty inexpensive because you don't really know what the weather is gonna be. And if you do come in the summer, you should be mindful that summer does have summer thunderstorms. Actually, June is the wettest month of the whole year. If you come in the winter, although it's cold, it doesn't snow all that much in Calgary because Calgary tends to be rather dry in the winter, though bone chilling cold. So when would I come? Yeah, uh, spring, summer or fall and definitely give the winter a miss. The sick thing to know is about where to stay. And a good part of staying in Calgary is there's a lot of really good hotels in this town. You'll find the majority of them definitely concentrated in the downtown area, uh, which is the one that I'm staying at during this trip, which I'll tell you more about in just a second. You'll also find a lot of hotels concentrated around the airport area. In particular, you'll even find a Marriott directly in the airport. So if you have an early flight out or a late arrival, you can stay right in the airport. You don't need to get a rental car. You don't need to go anywhere. They're directly connected to the terminal. You'll also find then another set of hotels that are kind of out east from Calgary on the way to Banff. So if you're headed out to Banff, you might consider staying out there. Now, where were we staying on this trip? We chose the Residence Inn Calgary Downtown Beltline. This is probably the best Residence Inn I've ever Ever stayed in I would definitely stay here again 33 floors we got a room on the 33rd floor amazing views out of that room we had two queen beds but they also have full kitchens refrigerators a uh, big bathroom a really excellent breakfast big self parking garage so if you're looking for a family friendly hotel to stay in uh, that has a good free breakfast definitely consider the residence in Beltline now, because we checked in really late, I didn't get a chance to do a full hotel review video of this property like I usually do, but I did get a chance to take a few more pictures of the room and I've uploaded them to my new favorite hotel review research and booking website, planin.com also the sponsor of this video. One of the big challenges I find when researching hotels in a city like Calgary with hundreds of hotels is it's often hard to sift through the reviews. Are they from people you know? Are they from people you trust? Are they from people who travel regularly or not? And the great thing about planin.com is it focuses on reviews from known creators. Now, if you search Calgary, you'll find there are a few other hotels that other creators recommend. So maybe the Residence Inn isn't for you. Maybe you'd prefer the Fairmont or the Hyatt Regency. You can check out the verified recommendations from those creators, media they've uploaded, and you can even book on Planin too. They offer really great rates on hotels. You do have to sign in to see them, but many times they're even cheaper than the hotel offers directly from their website. Last year around New Year's Eve, I stayed at the Wynn Las Vegas for 
40% off booking from planin.com. And so if you do want to check it out just to do some research, go ahead. If you want to sign up to check out the discounted rates, please use the link I have in the description below. And when you do that, you'll start following Yellow Productions. So whenever you search for reviews, reviews from yours truly, Yellow Productions will filter right to the top. And thank you to planin.com for sponsoring this video. Number seven is what to eat. And while I don't really feel like there's a standout dish per se in Calgary, uh, definitely locals are very proud of the beef from Alberta province. Since it's not really near the ocean, seafood would probably be something I would skip. Certainly in the downtown core, you will find lots of restaurants on Stevens Walk. One uh, restaurant, a lunch option we really liked was this place called Meat and Bread. They specialize in porchetta sandwiches and uh, they make them fresh, super delicious. We were actually really disappointed that they weren't open for dinner because if they were, we would have eaten them for both meals. Calgary also has a really vibrant beer and pub scene, so if you're interested in late night entertainment, you'll find many places in this city. Another great place to eat if everybody in your party wants something different is the food court at the Core Shopping Center. It's up on the fourth floor, lots of different options here and fries for the princess. And if you're craving Asian food, you'll find the biggest collection of it in the city around Chinatown. The Chinatown area is centered right around Center Avenue and the Bow River. And the eighth thing to know is about what are some of the major things to do in Calgary. And the number one thing to do is to visit the Calgary Tower. This tower is an icon of this town. It was built in the 60s. When it was built, it was the tallest structure of its kind in North America, meaning some place that has an elevator and an observation deck on top. Uh, tickets are 22 Canadian dollars to get up here. In addition to the observatory, they also have a rotating restaurant that you could eat in. Uh, rotates about once per hour, open for lunch and dinner. The views are truly spectacular. Uh, but I think one of the coolest spots too is right as you get out of the elevator, there is a glass bottom floor. So you can look all the way down to the bottom past your feet to see the column of the Calgary Tower. Pretty neat. I am definitely a sucker for observation towers. So I happen to like this one. Uh, but other than the observation deck and the restaurant, there's not much more here. But if you like views, this is definitely a view you'll appreciate. So if you're looking to do some shopping, I think one of the best shopping centers in central Calgary is the Core Shopping Center. This one is right along the Stevens Walk in downtown Calgary and a four-story building, glass atrium, really nice in here. What's also really cool is the Devonian Gardens. Up on the fourth floor next to the food court, there's a botanical gardens inside the shopping mall. Admission is free, there's koi fish, there's places to sit. It's just a great, tranquil place where the plants can grow all year round in a place that can get pretty cold. If you enjoy books or modern architecture, or you've got kids, then you'll enjoy a visit to Calgary's Central Library. This library, one of the best modern libraries I think I've been into. I'm sitting in the soaring atrium, wood paneling, skylights, lots of places to sit. Of course, there's books for you to check out and read or read while you're here. In addition, there's a coffee shop inside. You can drink coffee while you're here. If you're a budding YouTuber or podcaster, they've got production studios here as well. I really find this library amazing, and so did our four-year-old daughter. The children's library section, really cool. Books, places to play, even a playground inside. Uh, and so this was uh, definitely one of our favorite stops in downtown Calgary. To experience a bit of Calgary's history, visit Heritage Park. This is about a 20 minute drive south of downtown. Here you're gonna find a lot of old buildings and uh, trains and actors playing the part. Though do make sure to get here early because they close pretty early. Uh, admission is about $35 for adults and it's probably worth at least a half day here. For scenic views of the river, cross the Calgary Peace Bridge. This bridge built in 2012 has really become an icon of Calgary. It's a walking and cycling bridge. And from here, you get some really nice views of the Bow River down below. And if you're here on a warm day, maybe enjoy the sunbathing opportunity on the banks of the river. And the last thing to know is that we've got even more videos for Canada and beyond. But if your travels do bring you to Canada, you might enjoy checking out our video on Vancouver or Victoria in neighboring British Columbia. As soon as our Banff travel guide is out, you're gonna find that right up here too. As usual, explorers, we won't say goodbye because we'll see you in the next video.